Look at somebody tell me, looking good. Okay, we got we got something out there. Got a little preach family. Um, daily devotional. This is from our church. Uh, we got to get this app working correctly. I'm not sure this work, app is working right yet because I couldn't get it working right and I got to call the lady and get her to do what she got to do to get it right. But there's a, also an app. You call this up, this app, and you'll get this book online. And you can get to it anytime you want to on your phone. That'll be cool. But this is uh, from Ever Christian Church, uh, uh, devotional. And what we're going to do is, is we want to make sure that every visitor gets one of these, especially. And if we know somebody's going through a hard time, get one of these because this is such an inspiration. It's really got some good stuff in it. It's very inspirational. It's uh, very uh, growth-minded. And so uh, be sure if you didn't get one when you got in, make sure you get one before you leave. And, and again, we want to get all the visitors. We want to make sure visitors have got these. And if we know somebody's having a rough time, make sure that they've got one in their hand. Amen? Isn't God good? Y'all stand up, walk around a little bit. Get up, walk around. Tell somebody that you love them in the Lord. That you're glad they're here. Go ahead. Isn't God so good? I've been excited about this uh, sermon series. As I'm starting to get into it more, I really am. It's, uh, it, it's great. Amen? God, God, is, God just works so many wonders in, in our lives. And I thank you for that. There you go. Let's get your Bibles up. Stand for the reading of the Word. Get your Bibles up. Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3. God is so good to us. Yes, sir. He's a whole lot better to me than I am to Him. Amen. Can anybody else say that too? Yes, sir. <laughs> Hey, amen. Amen. I like to think that was not so, but it is. I like my brother Wayne that challenge is that we got to try to outdo God, try to out give God this year. Let's just do what we can to, to just to give it everything we got. If we'll give it all we got and do everything we can do, God will do what we cannot do. Amen. I was talking to somebody just this week and they were talking about God's not doing this and God's not doing that. And I said, well, how much of it you could do? You said, well, if God will do this, I will do that. I said, well, do you ever think that maybe faith is asking you uh, to you do your part? And then God will step in and do his part and say, think about it that way. Well, it's a good thing to think about. Amen. Philippians chapter 3, verse 13. Brothers, I count not, my, count not myself to have apprehended no one. I haven't arrived yet. How many here has arrived? Okay, I have not arrived yet, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Let's stretch forth your hands this way. Father, we love you, Lord. We praise your name. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We know, God, that you are alive and well and evermore and always will be on your throne. God, I thank you, Lord, that your spirit is in our midst today, too, Lord. Your spirit is your agent that's in this place to connect our hearts and the word together and to blend the word in so we can understand it and so we can see it and we can grasp it. I ask you, Lord, let your spirit just, just run, run through this place in a very powerful way. And, Lord, help us, God, to feel that freshness, Lord, uh, that your spirit brings. We thank you for that. In the name of Jesus, you're an awesome God. You're a powerful God. I ask you, Lord, to touch all those families that have been affected by death in the last few weeks, Lord. You've got that, too. And you have grace and you have comfort for all of them. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And we love you. The church said? Amen. Amen. You can be seated. On the way down, shake somebody's hand. Say, the past is behind us. The future is ahead of us. God is with us. And nothing shall be impossible. Go ahead. Amen. That's right. I happen to run across this this article about uh, you know some people don't just don't get it no matter how hard you try they just don't get it you ever you ever seen anybody like that amen no matter how hard you try well taking great pains to be specific the new auto shop teacher on staff explained to three of his students that he wanted them to clean a car that was parked outside 
and gave them two extension cords, a vacuum cleaner, a bucket, rags, and the car keys. He mentioned that the car was going to be used in the class. Later he went out and discovered them sitting in the car, feet up on the dashboard, listening to the stereo. Why aren't you vacuuming the car, he asked. Because the extension cord wouldn't reach, was the reply. Exasperated teacher stated, that's why I gave you two. We tried the other one, said the student, and it wouldn't reach either. <laughs> <laughs> that's the new book, okay? For all those who want to know, that's from the new book. It's not from the old book, amen. <laughs> Burn a new book too, man. <laughs> uh, it's like I was watching America's Got Talent. You ever watch America's Got Talent? It really is a cool show. And the other day, that, the new, one of the new judges said she didn't like beeping people or bell and wake her, bustle them. And they said, they started showing her in, all, in her. In her because they, they've already recorded a lot of this, and and uh, and so these aren't the live shows. And so if you'll notice during the show that we're wearing different kind of clothes because they're from different nights and just put the things in order. And so this girl didn't want to uh, buzz anybody out, and all of a sudden she started buzzing everybody. She got so busy and so happy with the buzzer that one day the old walk on stage and gave her name and they buzzed her. <laughs> I'm thinking, I'm, I don't want to show you my talent or not. You're going to buzz me for telling you my name. <laughs> Amen. All right, so, so here we go. Ready? Burn the book. You haven't even heard the rest of the jokes. Burn the book. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Keeping your focus. And, of course, I got rebuild mode. You know, uh, again, this, this is a, a, a church call. This is, when I say church call, it's everybody. Look at somebody and say, everybody means you and me. Tell them, you and me. All right? And it's not only in this church, it's all over, but especially, I'm concerned right at this moment with this church, but it's for all churches, but especially right now for this church, right? The church call is, uh, uh, in case you haven't noticed, uh, uh, we're in a rebuild mode. And because we're in a rebuild mode, you know, I can just think about just a few months ago when this place was pretty well packed out, and then it was a few months before that, it wasn't. Since a few months before that, it was, and a few months before that, you know what I'm talking about? It's kind of like a like a seesaw. Amen. It's kind of going back and forth, and we're in rebuild mode. But the Lord assured me that once we get to this rebuild mode, we're going to be taken to a newer height than we had ever been taken before. Amen. So, so here it goes. Watch this. Because of rebuild mode, you can either let it depress you, or you can let it drive you. Now that, that, the choice is yours. Do you want it to depress you and get you all upset and think, well, we're going downhill, we're going to you know, go ahead and just quit coming because nothing's happening, blah, 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 blah. Or can you say, you know what, this is fresh, God's doing something good, and we thank Him for what He's doing. Just this morning I was talking to somebody else uh, in, in their life, uh, they were telling me that in their life everything was going wrong and it seemed like everything was was getting out of hand and, and they just thought their life was just, just falling all to pieces and then I, I reminded them of something. And that is, God not only sends great things in your life, God also sends adversity. Amen. Amen. He sends great things, yes, to build you up, but he sends, when he sends the adversity, he builds you up even higher. Okay? Adversity, without, listen, without Goliath, David would have still been a shepherd boy. But because of Goliath, he wound up being king. Amen? So, so think about this thing. You may be having adversity in your life today and wonder how in the world what's going on or, or, or what's happening. And I'm here to tell you, God's got you in rebuild mode. Because in rebuild mode, he'll even take your enemies and your adversity and use it to rebuild you. Matter of fact, some, you know, some, if you, you know anybody that just gripes you? When you hear him talk, it's like, 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 oh, like fingers on the chalkboard. Think about this. God's using them as sandpaper. To, rough, to smooth off your rough edges. So thank God for even the ones that you go, every time they talk to you, Argh! remember, God's using them to take off the rough edges. You know, somebody said, thank God he loves me enough to take off my rough edges. Somebody say that. I dare you. <laughs> okay, so, so God uses rebuild mode to actually draw us out of complacency. When I say collapse, we just fall all to pieces. We're expecting, you know, <coughs> when things are falling all to pieces, just know this, God's going to put you in rebuild mode to bring you out of that. So he draws us out of complacency and draws out of us freshness and for us to go further. This is just a few, a few from last week. There's only just one or two more and then we're going into something fresh. 
Awesome. Just remember something about the rebuild mode, though. Rebuild mode is a dangerous time. I love this. I love that sign. Do not touch. Not only will this kill you, it will hurt the whole time you were dying. <laughs> I just, I love this sign. I don't know why, because I don't want to get shocked. I don't want to hurt the whole time. I don't want to, but that's just, just, but this sermon, that's just, that's just funny. I'm sorry. All right. That's that sick sense of humor I got sometimes. All right. It's a dangerous time because we can lose sight of what God is doing. Remember, he's not pushing you down in rebuild mode. He's actually picking you up. How many has ever said this? Well, I'm at the bottom now. There's only one place to look, which is that. Okay, in rebuild mode, God will, will, will do some demolition in your life. He'll send some adversity in your life. He'll do some things in your life that you weren't expecting to happen. Even use people that you weren't expecting him to, that you say, well, Satan's using those people. Well, Satan may be using those people, but God is using them too because he's using them to build. This is not tear you down, but to build you up, to make you stronger. Okay, I can think of, I, you know, I, it was a, uh, it was uh uh, Mighty Army, I think it was last week, it says in this life, there's two kinds of people. People that build you up and people that tear you down. In the end, you will thank God for both. Wow. Wow. Okay, so here we go. Watch this. So, what God is doing is not pushing you down. He's actually pulling you up. And don't lose focus on what you're doing. Don't get discouraged. But use this as a time of discovery because watch this. Once, once Satan gets you discouraged, here's one of his greatest tools, discouragement. Because here's what happens is, look, it's a subtle tool because it sneaks up so soft and it's unnoticeable. Have you ever, you know, <clears throat> it's like I, I, I took notice of my mama died on December 16th. And my wife died on December 20th. And my first wife's birthday is July the 6th and, or, and my mother's is April 22nd and I don't even notice when, the, when these are coming up but once they come up that day I just kind of feel kind of weird and then toward the end of the day I'll look and see what day is oh no wonder okay even though I'm not thinking about it consciously subconsciously I'm thinking about it some of you on here right now you got things you wonder, why am I feeling so bad today? Why are things feeling so rough today? You may not actually physically be thinking about something, but subconsciously, because remember, your mind never sleeps, ever. So you might, well, there's a few people I wonder about, but most people. <laughs> <laughs> your mind never sleeps. And because your mind never sleeps, you're always thinking about something, and whatever is heavy on your mind, well, even while you're not even thinking about it, your mind is still trying to process why it happened. Process how am I going to get out of this. Process which way should I go. And so it's still going on in the back of your mind. Uh, it's kind of like your computer. You're working on the computer and you're working on the screen. And, and, and all of a sudden it gets bogged down. You're thinking, why is it getting bogged down? I'm only working on a word. Uh, a, a, a just working in Microsoft Word. How is it getting bogged down? And you hit a little button that says your program, your computer's running 26 programs right now. And so you hit a little button and it cleans out those 26 programs and now you're just using Word by itself and you got plenty of space. The same way our mind is processing all this stuff and processing junk all at the same time while we're trying to work on regular stuff that we've got planned for. So it's a subtle tool. It sneaks, sneaks up so soft it's often unnoticeable and it's a deceptive tool because it makes you just feel, uh, it makes you feel temporarily, uh, I should put it, uh, uh, ineffective. Okay, I got effective there. You got to start work, working late at night or have to start putting, making sure somebody else checks behind me. <laughs> okay, it, it makes you feel ineffective temporarily and it's a patient tool because it's like a trap waiting to be sprung. And it's a cooling tool. Because it cools you down and it keeps you down and it prevents you from ever getting hot. So if there's something in your life right now that is actually bringing you down or discouraging you, remember, sometimes you don't even realize. I remember one time uh, I had a doctor, I had a person in my family that was having a very, very hard problem. They were very sick. And, and, and the person on the outside seemed like they were coping with it. And, but, uh, but there was all this stuff happening to them. 
And so I went to the doctor and said, Doc, we got a problem because, because I started naming off all the stuff. And they said, they were depressed and didn't even know. Why? Although they were putting on a good front, all the signs of depression were there. And so that's one of those things I learned a long time ago. You got to be careful how you're acting because remember, this is why Satan loves to use discouragement in your life. So now, now our focus, we got to be focused, okay? And here, here we go. I've only got, I've only got a, a two, actually two scriptures to use today, but I'm not going to say how long I'm going to stay on each one. Okay? <laughs> Satan doesn't want you to realize the unlimited value of your focus. There's potential, there's power, and there's position in an undivided focus. You know, <clears throat> how many ever, how many is ever used to, this is what it was, you're talking to your spouse or your parents or your, and while they're sitting there, they come home and they got the paper, they got this, you're talking to them, they're going, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, sure, mm-hmm, <coughs> mm-hmm. I love to play little games when I see that going on. I go, you know what? I killed the neighbor's cat today. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I buried him in the backyard. Mm-hmm. That sounds nice, doesn't it? Yeah. Uh, uh, by the fact, I buried him next to the other team cats I killed last night. Uh-huh. That's cool. Uh, uh, the law should be here any time trying to find me. Well, I hope they do, dear. You just have a good time. Why is my focus? It's divided. I'm trying to read this. I'm trying to listen to my spouse or listen to my kids. Or, or you know, And my kids loved it because they would come to me at church. Bethany learned it from D D.C. was the instigator. He taught Daniel. And then Daniel taught Bethany. They would come to me in the middle of church while I'm talking to somebody. Go, Dad, can I have the keys? I'm talking to somebody. Just give me the keys. All right, I give them the keys. 30 minutes later, I can't find my keys. It's raining. I can't get out of my car. I go to my office. It's locked. I'm trying to find my keys. I don't know where the kids are at. They've gone off of somebody else because they have already come and ask me, can I go off of such and such? And I said, yes, I don't even remember. I know your kids don't do that. <laughs> okay, okay. So, 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 again, divided focus. So, so, it's very important. Remember, if you can be focused like a laser beam focus, your potential will grow. It's amazing. God's got so much for us to do and so much that we can do. But, he, but Satan tries to keep our focus broken. Because if your focus is broken, you say, well, I'm just working over so many problems. Well, you know what? Sometimes some of these problems you're working on, you shouldn't be working on because Satan's using those to divide your focus. God's saying that you should ignore things, but certain things, you know, well, you know, I was taught as an EMT. When I come on a wreck or when I come up in places, I'm supposed to do an initial, an initial uh, look, uh, look over of the people. When I look over them, I can't think of the proper word right now, but yeah. you look, well, yeah. assessment, yeah, do the assessment. Why do I want to work on a guy that's got a toe out of joint? When I got one that's got a, he's been, his, 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 his carotid artery has been sliced and he's bleeding out. He's trying to call me over now and say, well, just hold on just a minute. I got to reset this toe. Some of us have got some people who are trying to work on toes out of joint. And other people's hearts have stopped. Amen? That's what a divided focus will do. There's so much potential. There's so much power. There's so much. Your position is so strong and unmovable if you have an undivided focus. And so all I'm going to do is, oh, uh, we're still going to go on through this for a couple of weeks. But here we go. There's ten things to focus on as we reveal. All right? Here's what I want you to think about. I'm only going to do two scriptures today. But like I said, I don't know how long I'll be on. Maybe it all depends on how good my focus is. Amen. <laughs> Matter of fact, I'm going to tell you this. The more you respond, the shorter I get. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay, ready? <laughs> ready. Number one. Watch this. God has called you. Listen now. God has called you. It wasn't to get you to this place 
so he can drop you. Listen again. God has called you. Every last person in here has a call on their life. Everybody has a call on their life. And where you're at today, God hasn't brought you to this point and said, okay, I'm through with you. You're disposable. I'll just get rid of you. There's nothing else you can do. You might as well just go ahead and pack it up. No! God didn't get you to this place to drop you. Somebody say that. God's got this. Say it. God's got this. Hey, he didn't get you here to drop you. Here, here it goes. Watch this. I love it. Philippians 1 to 6 in the Amplified. I am convinced and sure of this very thing, that he who began a good work in you will continue until the day of Jesus Christ, right up to the time of his return, developing that good work and perfecting and bringing it to full completion in you. God's still working on you. Amen? Amen. God's still working on me to make me what I ought to be. It took him just a week to make the moon and the stars, the sun and the earth and Jupiter and Mars. I love and impatient he must be because he's still working on me. Amen. 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 Then we're up here. We hadn't arrived yet. Y'all go ahead and get in with it. Come on, let's get going here. That's right. God had not brought you here to drop you. God had Amen. God's got something planned for you. Look, look, there is a work, a good work in you. And another good work in you is God's good work. God's doing something special in every last one of us. He began it and he will complete it. He is the mighty God. Yes. Amen. 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 You know, I finally found something that I almost got in trouble with the other night I was at. The other night I was at the prison and I almost got in trouble. Matter of fact, I think I might still be able to watch my back. I was getting ready to do a training class. I, Brother Pollock said, can you do this training class for me? I said, sure. And so I go to the training class, and I go in this room, and there's a computer, and I got to get this computer running because all the new people are going to be coming in for me to train. But when I come in, then there was full of deputies and detention officers. And I said, how are y'all guys doing? They said, look, they, look they, didn't, they already didn't want to be there. They got to work 12 hours. They were just getting there for the 12-hour shift. And they're in there, and they're all looking like, ugh. And, and I said, well, can somebody tell me the, get me the password for this computer? I really need this computer to teach this class. And one guy, one guy went out and come back and said, it's deputy. <laughs> and of course, me and my big mouth, I said, you mean like in, I shot the sheriff, but I didn't shoot the deputy? <laughs> Nobody laughed. <laughs> they got me here. Look, they didn't laugh. Matter of fact, I thought they were going to come on me. And I looked over some of the older guys that should know that song, and they were smiling until the other guys started looking at them and they went, uh, I want to say, you know, <laughs> you bunch of sissies. Come on, fellas. It's okay. But they had guns out there, so I just got quiet. All right. I got to get this. I want to get this in your head right now. God called you. Take your finger and say, God called me. God called me. Go ahead, do it again. God called me. Ready? Here we go. God called me bumps and all. Say, it. God called me bumps and all. Amen. God called me bumps and all. Now say this. God uses my bumps in my call. Say it. God uses my bumps in my call. God uses everything in my life, in my faith. God uses every part of my life in my call. Amen. There's a good work in you. Amen. God didn't bring you here to let go of you. Now that's number one. You got one more scripture. Brandon, you go ahead and figure out what you can play for an altar call. <laughs> he might get happy now and start playing real fast. He might look, because here's a good one. He will build his church, not us. He'll build it. He uses us, but he uses us through his power to build the church. Think about it. Look, Matthew 6 and 18, Amplified again, and I tell you, you are Peter, Greek Petrus, a large piece of rock, but on this rock, the Petra, the huge rock like Gibraltar, I will build my 
thy church in the gates of Hades, the powers of the infernal region shall not overpower it or be strong to its detriment or holding out against it. Let me just stop here and tell you something about the gates. The gates of every city is where the wise men met. It's where the government met. It's where the city was governed from, was from the city gates. Lawyers met there. Court was held. Civil matters were decided at the gates. At the gate of the city, punishment was dealt. Punishment was administered at the gates. The gates were the most powerful part of the city. You could not get into that city unless you went through the gates. I want you to think about something. Oh, wow, this is that. Well, listen, listen, listen carefully. <coughs> the biggest thing about the gates were they were stationary. Jesus said, upon this rock, the confession that I am the Christ, upon this rock, the confession of the gospel, upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. If they're stationary, listen carefully, please listen. If the gates are stationary, why are we letting Satan run over? Or stationary, why are we letting Satan run over us? Watch this. And now I'm going to tell you who, who you are really. You are. You are Peter, a rock. This, let's see. This is the rock in which I put the, the together of my church, a church so extensive or so expansive with energy that not even the gates of hell will be able to keep it out. Not even the gates of hell will be able to keep my church out. We're letting hell take us down, and we should be going in and taking hell down. Amen. 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 Quit letting hell take us down, and let's start taking hell down. Amen. Amen. Matter of fact, if you listen, listen, listen. God has invested so much power in us. Do you think Jesus Christ died on that cross for hell to come against us? He died on that cross. This is what's so cool. He died on the cross, and the Bible says that he went into hell, and he preached to the captives for three days, and he told he told John and I, how the pastor, he said, I was dead, but now I'm alive. And he says, look what I got. Not only am I alive, I was dead, and I'm alive, but when I went into hell, you know what? Satan walks everywhere he goes. You know why? Because Jesus took the skis. Why do we keep allowing Satan to run over our life when we have the power? Wow. Y'all, that's all to get you excited right now. Let me get you excited. I think I'm just going to sit down. <laughs> and preach some more later. <laughs> Look at somebody and say, look, take your keys out. Take your keys out. You got your keys with you? Take them out. I want you to do this. I want you to stand up and do this. The next time Satan tells you what he's going to do, the next time Satan tries to run ramshot over your life, the next time he tries to get you to believe all kinds of mess about you and then believe all kinds of mess about how he's going to take over this and that and the other, you just pull these out and go, no, you're not. Jesus got your keys, bro. Jesus got your keys. Amen? Amen. Remember, gates are stationary. They're there to keep us out of his territory. They're not there for him to come into ours. It's for him to keep us out of his territory. It's time for us to kick down the doors and get in his territory and tell him, quit, let go of my family, let go of the stuff that's going on around me. We're going to take back the schools. We're going to take back this area. We're going to take back the drug infested areas because we're going to tear hell all to pieces because we're coming. Amen. Real quickly, you have to.
focus through the pain. This is what we ended with last week. You have to keep your focus through the pain to get to those gains. Amen? Amen. When you go fighting, don't you expect Satan to just lay down and play dead because he ain't going to do it. He's going to fight. You know, when you cut a snake's head off, he still keeps on moving. Yes, sir. Have you noticed that? Yes, sir. You want to have some fun getting around somebody and cut the head, when you cut the snake's head off, pick up and say, this thing's still alive. You'll scare him to death. Amen. When you take a chicken and wring his neck, he's still running. Yes, sir. All right. Have you ever heard say he's just crazy and running as wild as a chicken with his head cut off? I was raised out there on the farm with my grandma. I remember those chickens, how they run all around. You had to wait for them to quit running so you could catch them and pluck them. Satan's not going to lay down, but that's okay. Don't expect him to. We've got the power. Somebody say, We've got the power. And anytime Satan tells you that you don't, here's all you got to do. I'm not kidding. Do it again, y'all. Come on. Take the keys out. Next time Satan tries to tell you all what you're going to do, you do this right here. And go, really? God's got the power. God's got your keys. God's got the power. God's got the power. Somebody say, God's got the power. God's got the power. God's got the power. Come on. God's got the power. Glory. That's right. That's right. You can, look, here it is. You can focus on your problems, and when you do, all you're going to have is pain and pain. But if you would just focus on the promises instead, you're going to find power, and you're going to find peace in the name of Jesus. Now, everybody, everybody by your head. Everybody by your head. If you're here today, first off, if you're here today and you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, today's your day. Today's your blessed day because you come to the right place at the right time. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, nobody looking around, every head bowed, would you just stick up that hand quickly? Say, I do not know Him, but I want to. Maybe you're here this morning and you would say, you know what, Pastor? Me and the Lord, we were one time we're tight. But I didn't understand these principles that you're teaching right now. I thought God had dropped me. And I didn't realize that the, gate, the gates of hell were stationary. And it's for me to go through and take back. Not for him to come and take away from me. I believed the lie from hell. And somewhere along the way, I backed off from God. And I'm not where I was with him. If I'm talking to you with every head bowed and every eye closed... If you're here today and you're saying, I'm not where I once was with God, but I want to be back there, would you raise that hand? Raise that hand. Bless them, Lord. Bless them, Lord. Maybe today you just say, I'm ready to take back what the devil has stolen from me. I'm taking back. I, I'm not going to believe the lie that God has dropped me. I'm not going to believe the lie anymore that God's through with me. I'm not going to believe the lie anymore that I'm disposable. I'm not going to believe the line anymore that, 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 that the gates are coming my way, but I'm going to go to the gates and I'm going to take care of some business. If that's you, just raise those hands. Raise them because we're all going to pray right now. Raise those hands. Here we go. Let's pray together. Ready? Let's pray out loud. Everybody pray. Father, Father I thank you, I thank you that, you that you have not dropped me. I thank you, God, I thank you, God. that I'm not disposable. I thank you, God, that you can use every bump and every bruise in my life for your glory because you called me knowing ahead of time how it was going to be today, and you still called me. Father, I realize the gates are stationary, and you're calling us to go take back by the enemy is stolen. And we're going to do it. Through your name. Right now in the name of Jesus. We rededicate our life. And our ministry. And the call in our life. We rededicate to it. In the name of Jesus. We're yours. And we thank you. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Your Lord, thank you. another reason you want to come pray, let me be fine. Come on up here and pray. We'll spend time with you.
If you want to come pray at the altar, come on. We're not trying to stop you. I just know that the way we've been doing lately, it gives a chance for everybody to get involved in the altar call, and we all get a chance to pray, and it's really, really awesome. Anybody else you need to come up and pray? This altar's open. It's never shut down. They can come anytime during any service and be prayed for. God loves us, and he knows what we need, and he's able to meet every need in our life, and we thank him for it in the name of Jesus. We thank him for it. 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 God is awesome. All the time. God's got this. God's got it. I can't ever think of a time he didn't have it. How about you? Amen? Come back Tuesday night. Uh, we're going to go ahead and put it on the website. In the next couple of weeks, we're going to start that thing on depression. That, that, that eight-week class on depression is going to start probably a week after the next. But we're going to make sure we put it on the website and give you two weeks. Okay? Two weeks. And then everybody wants, wants me to come on Tuesday nights. It's going to be awesome. And we thank you. Really? And look, y'all been praying today because we got one more funeral. And that's my brother-in-law. And and the way it's kind of she, my, my, my sister-in-law's in Tennessee. And she can't get here. Uh, his body is still, they, they cremated him in Tennessee. But he won't be here today. But all the people from Virginia and other states are going to be here. And they're going to do that Facebook Live. So my sister-in-law can be in the funeral. Okay? So let's remember them in prayer. All right? Brother Steve. 